people are translating that word as falling away. Now because of that discovery, I have experienced a renewed interest in the things that the Apostle Paul had to say about the church during the last days before the rapture. Now this word apostasia is interpreted by some Greek scholars to mean falling away or rebellion. However, the other interpretation of the word by excellent Greek scholars is departure, praise God, departure. Tyndale, for example, translated it this way in his first translation from Greek to English. Greek scholars agree that to pinpoint the true meaning of the Greek noun, it is necessary to look at the verb from which that noun is derived. The Greek noun, apostasia, comes from the root verb apistemi, meaning to go away, to depart, to remove. This root verb is used 15 times in the Bible and, is only, and in only three of those times does it speak of a falling away. It is most often translated depart and usually refers to one person departing from another or from a place. Now I've had the privilege of consulting several Bibles from the 15th century. Some of them present 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 as follows. Now this is from the Geneva Bible, written in the 15th century. Listen to how it's interpreted. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a departing first, and that man of sin be disclosed, even the son of perdition. Takes on a different light, doesn't it? It doesn't talk about the body of Christ falling away. It talks about the body of Christ being caught away. All right? Now that makes sense. Now let's look at the Great Bible, also written in the 15th century. It said, Let no man deceive you by any means, for the Lord shall not come except there come a departing first, and that sinful man be opened, the son of perdition. Now let's listen to Tyndale's translation. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for the Lord cometh not except there come a departing first, and that that sinful man be opened, the son of perdition takes on a different light, doesn't it? And then we come to the translation of an excellent, widely recognized commentator, Kenneth S. Wiest. In the New Testament, an expanded translation, Mr. Wiest translates this verse as follows. Do not begin to allow anyone to lead you astray in any way, because that day shall not come, except the aforementioned departure of the church to heaven comes first and the man of lawlessness, lawlessness is disclosed in his true identity, the man of perdition. You see, the definite article occurring before the word apostasia makes it apply to a particular departure, one known to the writer and to the recipients of the letter. Now there's a couple of Greek scholars, well-known men, one of them's name is John Dawson, and he indicates that apostasia means a departure from any place. John Lineberry translates this verse this way. He says, do not begin to let anyone beguile you in any way because the day will not come. Talking about the day of the Lord, except there come the departure, meaning the rapture of the church and the man of lawlessness be revealed, unveiled, uncovered, the son of perdition the son of eternal misery, doom, and destruction. That's his interpretation. I've got a list of many others who use the word departure, but I'm not going to go into it right now. As a matter of fact, if any of you have an Amplified Bible with a New Testament in it, there's a footnote in there which declares that a possible rendering of this word apostasia is departure of the church. These excellent Greek scholars and commentators give us sufficient evidence to know of a certainty that this Greek word apostasia can be rightfully translated in more ways than one, and departure best fits the con this context. You see, folks, when I was in school, they taught us a text out of context is no text at all. You can take, a, you can take scripture out of its setting and make the Bible say anything. The Bible says that Judas went out and hanged himself. Another place it says, go thou and do likewise. So the Bible says, folks, 
Judas went out and hanged himself. Y'all go out and do the same thing. See, you can make the Bible say anything. You can pull these scriptures out and put them together. So a text out of context is no text at all. Now, folks, listen to me. I am happy to acknowledge that our hope in the pre-tribulation rapture does not hinge on how one Greek word is translated, but this translation certainly ties in beautifully with the rest of the chapter and with the rest of the Bible. Now, how many times have you heard me tell you that the Bible, the Old Testament, is filled with types and shadows? In other words, it's filled with examples uh, of things to come. When the Jews come out of Egypt, they wander through the desert before they went into the, the, the Promised Land. That's a type of uh, us going into the Promised Land. All right? How about Noah? You remember Noah was a preacher of righteousness, and God revealed to him that there was a flood coming. And he began to build the ark, and he began to preach to the people of what was going to happen. But they laughed at him, they scorned him, and what have you. And when the problems came, what happened? When the floods came up and all of those people were drowning down there, the waters lifted the, top, the ark and Noah and his family up above all the problems. You see, dear hearts, that is a type of the rapture of the church. He knew ahead of time what was coming. He warned the people. We know Jesus is coming. We're warning the people. The water is representative of the Holy Spirit. The Bible talks about we will receive wells of living water. It talks about the, uh, the rivers of living water will flow out from our innermost being. So we can see that water is representative of the Holy Spirit. So the water, who is rep which is representative of the Holy Spirit, lifted that ark up above the problems. The Holy Spirit, the anointing, when Jesus comes, is going to lift us up above the problems before the tribulation period. That's why I say that this, this fits better uh, with, with the whole setting of the Bible. You've got to, you've got to look.